In the last tutorial, we have covered the messaging system. That is the introduction part. Now let us understand the Kafka, which is one of the hot topic these days. So every IT industry or the software software industry are using the Kafka as a message broker. So let us understand. Uh, we will cover the following things. What is uh, Kafka? What is the background? And what are the major use cases? So let us come to the introduction part. What is Kafka? So Apache Kafka is the open source publish subscribe based messaging system. So as you know, in the last tutorial, I have uh, defined there are two types of the messaging system. One is queue messaging system and another, another one is the publish subscribe messaging system. So Kafka is the one of the example of the publish subscribe based messaging system. So Kafka can work as a message queue too. So it can also work as a message queue but there is some proper uh, rules or some proper configuration we need to do this and we will achieve like queuing messaging system with the help of Kafka. So we will see in the latter part of this tutorial. So what is Kafka? It is the distributed durable fault tolerance and high scalable by design. So fundamentally it is the system that takes the streams of the messages from the messages from the application known as producer and store them reliably on the central clusters. So containing the cluster is like containing the set of the brokers and allow those messages to receive by the application known as consumers and that process the messages. So basically what it does like Kafka is a separate broker which is deployed in the some other server which receive all the messages which coming out from the producer and it delivered to the consumers. Now uh, you can see this is the some overview like diagram high level view of Kafka like producer one, producer two, producer three. These three producers are publishing the messages to the Kafka cluster. Kafka cluster is nothing but the group of the uh, server or set of the server where Kafka is hosted or deployed. And there are three consumers here, consumer one, two, three, and they are consuming all the messages. Now let us talk about the background. So Kafka was created at LinkedIn around 2010 to tackle the various events such as page view, messages from the messaging system and logs from the various services. So later it was made open source and developed in, into a comprehensive system which is used for reliably storing the huge amount of the data, enabling the high throughput of the message transfer between the different entities and streaming the real time data. So in the initial days, Kafka was created at LinkedIn around 2010 to track the various events. Like you can, you already know that there is a many uh, views out there in the some of the posts, like the likes and the messages. To track all these events, the Kafka was developed by the LinkedIn in back in 2010. Apart from that, uh, they are also start uh, make it open source and develop on the comprehensive system, which is also used for uh, these three points, right? Uh, we can able to use for streaming the real time data, uh, reliably uh, storing the huge amount of the data. We can store a uh, huge amount of the data as well. So at high end, we can call the Kafka distributed commit logs. A commit logs also known as the write ahead logs or the transaction logs is append only data structure that can be persistently store the sequence of the records. So uh, what is means that we are it is also we call it's like commit logs. So once the uh, something is uh, stored, it cannot be omitted. It cannot be removed and it will store in the sequential order. Records are always append to the end of the logs and once added records cannot be deleted or modified. Reading from the commits logs always happens from the left to right or from the old to new. So this is one of the uh, important point related to the Kafka. Like once the message or the log get stored, it cannot be deleted or cannot be modified. Modified, okay. And read operation is happen from the left to right, or you can say the from old to new. So you, you can see here like first uh, store here, next record written here. So oh, it is coming like that. First uh, the zero at zero position, the first message uh, are stored. Then the first position, like another message stored, like in the sequential order. 
Kafka stores all the messages on the disk. Since all the reads and writes happen in the sequence, Kafka takes advantage of sequential and disk read. Okay, so uh, we will see in the later part. Now let us see what is the use cases of the Kafka. Kafka can be used for collecting the big data and the real-time analysis. Here are the some of its top use cases. So these are the some top use cases of the Kafka. The first one is the metrics. Kafka can be used to collect and aggregate the monitoring data. So distributed service can push the different operational metrics to the Kafka service server. And this metric can then be pulled from the Kafka to produce the aggregated statistics. So for this purpose, so this is one of the major use cases of Kafka. Now come to the second use case, log aggregation. Kafka can be used to collect the data from the multiple sources and make them available in the standard format to the multiple consumers. Okay, the third one is the stream processing. Kafka is quite useful for use cases where the collected data undergoes processing at multiple stages. For example, the raw data consumed from the topic is transformed transform, enriched or aggregated and published to a new topic for the further consumption. So this way of the data processing is known as stream, stream processing. So uh, you can see this is the stream processing. Now the another in advantage or use cases of Kafka is commit logs. Kafka can be used as an external commit logs for any distributed system. Distributed, distributed service can log their transactions to Kafka to keep track of what, what is happening. This transaction data can be used for replication between the nodes and also become very useful for the disaster recovery. For example, to help failed nodes to recover their st stages, states. Okay, so what is the major benefit of the commit logs? Like whatever thing is happening in your service for uh, understanding purpose, let us suppose this is one of the uh, pages. So whatever things you are doing on this page, like you are clicking on this button or you are highlighting this portion. So all these events get commit uh, stored in the commit logs or in the Kafka broker. Or if in the future something went wrong and your service goes down, so in so for debugging purpose or to track the actual issue or the root cause, uh, we can just go into the commit logs and see what is hap happened to the service. What are the major reasons for uh, due to which the, our service goes down? The another benefit is like website uh, activity tracking. One of the Kafka original use cases was to build a user activity tracking pipeline. So when the Kafka was invented or the created, the major purpose was to track the user activity on the website. User activities uh, like such as page clicks, searches, etc. Et are published to the Kafka into the separate topics. These topics are available for subscribers for the range of use cases, including the real-time processing, real-time monitoring, or loading into the Hadoop or the data warehousing system for offline processing and reporting. So the, these use cases is one of the major reasons why today the Kafka is there or in the market, why it is created. So for this is the major reason for tracking the user activity on the website. The last and the most important advantage is uh, or one of the use cases of the Kafka is product suggestions. Imagine an online shopping site like Amazon.com which offer a feature of similar products to suggest a, a look like products that customer could be interested in buying. So if you notice, if you if you uh, uh, if you try to purchase something, you will get some other products in the suggestion box. So how this all these things suggestion come into the picture like how uh, like website knows that these these are the products you might also li like. So this can also be achieved by using the Kafka. To make this work, uh, we can track every consumer actions like search queries, product clicks, time spent on any products, etc and record this activity in the Kafka. So all the activities, whatever the consumer or the end user is doing or 
on the website we are keep track of each and every milliseconds events in the topic and we are publishing in the topic and that topic data can be consumed by some of the other services which is acting as a consumer to that particular kafka kafka uh, service or the broker then the consumer application can read these messages to find the correlated products that can shown to the consumer in the real time alternatively since all the data is persistent in the kafka a batch job can run over the night on the similar product information gathered by the system and generating an email for the consumer with the product suggestions so this is what is it means that so it will gather all the activity whatever the user done whatever the product uh, uh, the user visited by how much time they spent based on all the analysis the consumer service uh, take all this uh, thing from that kafka topic all these messages or the product information and then the consumer process this thing and by the using the mail and they send that product suggestions in the mail or the email to to all the uh, to all to that particular users whatever they have searched or whatever they have done the query on that particular website so that is the major advantage of the kafka so all right so these are the things in this tutorial uh, let us summarize what are the things we have covered so we saw what is kafka we saw what is the background and what are the use cases of the kafka so that's it all about this tutorial so see you soon in the next tutorial thanks